Do you have uneven eyes like I do? Some of you have noticed this, some of you may not have noticed, but I have really uneven eyes. I have a couple of issues going on here. So today I'm gonna to show you some subtle tricks that you can do with the power of makeup to help disguise and even out the look of your eyes. Now, as you look closely, my left eye droops downward and then my right eye, it looks a little bit more open, but I have a hood. My hood on this eye comes down further than it does on this eye. So I have a couple of things to correct today. So if you're new here, be sure you hit that subscribe button. And now let's get started. Now I have already started with a few steps of my makeup. I did my foundation and a little bit of cream contour, and then I have already applied an eyeshadow primer. This is the Thrive Cosmetics 360 Eye Lift. Now the next step is I'm gonna go ahead and go to the brows first. Normally I don't do this in my everyday makeup routine, but this can be really helpful to get you started to kind of see where you need to go with your eyeshadow. Brows do play a very important part in this whole process. So my brows look pretty even here but you'll notice the space between my brow and my lash line on this eye, especially that outer corner, is a lot further than it is on this eye. So I'm gonna show you what I do to compensate there. So we're starting with the brows. I'm going to use the NYX Precision Brow Pencil in taupe. I've gone back to this one. It's just a really good color for my hair right now. Now what I typically do is I start on this eye. This is the one that does not need as much correction. Although I'll show you there is a distance issue I have too. So uh, I'm just gonna put a little bit of pencil here below the brow. And now I'm gonna go straight to the arch. So I am going to go on top of the brow and I'm going to give myself a little more of an arch here on this brow. And I do have a full brow tutorial. Actually, I have a couple, so I'll link those down below if you want more details on how to find the correct shape for your brows, all of that. But I'm just gonna kind of give you a few brief details as I fill in today as it relates to uneven eyes. Now, as I said, um, I do have a difference in the distance between this inner corner, you can see it's way over here, and this inner corner in my brow. My brow comes over here, but this one stops way over here. So I actually bring this brow in a little bit closer to my nose. Um, my nose is also, <laughs> A little crooked so you know this is the video to share all of my flaws with you all <laughs> so that it can be helpful to you all right now we're gonna get to this brow so you can see that wasn't too difficult right looks really nice but now you can really see how far down this is compared to this so again I do like to start here below the brow just to kind of get the line started and I am trying to keep this even with that then I'm gonna go to the top so this one I need to go a little bit further up because again the arch of my brow needs to be over the iris so I need a little more height here but I also need to bring this down a little bit I know people just go crazy when you talk about bringing the tail of your brow down at all it's not going to drag your face down. In fact, this is going to help really even out my eye here. So I'm going to start here by again going on top of the brow. And you can see, I mean, I don't have any hair right here. So I'm just drawn in where I wish I had brow hairs. <laughs> All right. So by the looks of things, you can see that arch looks pretty even here. All right. Now I'm going to pull this down and fill in and go a little bit beyond where my brow naturally stops there. All right, so it's slightly thicker here. 
but that's okay. And then as I said, I'm, I'm pulling this tail down just a little bit. If I were to keep going straight out, that would make the distance between my lash line and my brow even greater. And that's not what I want. All right, then I'm gonna just go in here and I'm not going to, I'm gonna try to not go all the way in as far on this brow because I'm trying to even out the spacing between my brows just slightly. All right, so I'll bring this in just a little more and then just fill in with a few strokes through my brows. And then what I do is I always go back to this arch and go up maybe just a little bit more just so that there's a little bit of evenness there. Okay, so we're already kind of helping to shorten the distance here. And now I am going to go ahead and put in just a little bit of brow gel. This is the Merit Brow Gel in Taupe. I've really been enjoying this. And I am combing up those brow hairs. Just helps keep everything in place and helps keep everything looking lifted, especially here at the tail of the brow. And then any areas that you feel like, like I feel like I got a little bit extra, there we go. I'm just gonna take it a Q-tip. Okay, we're looking a little better already. Now I'm gonna go in with my Brow Bone Highlight Shade and I'm just using this one from the Natasha Denona Peak Palette. This is the shade Aya using a Sigma E50. And for this color, I chose something that is pretty close to my skin tone. I'm just putting this under the arch of the brow and then underneath. If I wanted to do something brighter, I would only do it under the arch of the brow, which I'll show you at the end. But for now, just doing this to help with blending. All right, now the shaping begins. <laughs> Going in with the mini Biba palette. I'm gonna start with this peach shade and a Morphe M504. If you have smaller eyes than I do, you might wanna go down to a M506 brush, go through the crease. So I'm starting on the eye that I have the most issues with. And I'm taking this brush above my natural crease. Now see my, my real crease is down here, you can kinda of see. And I'm going above the crease there with this brush and that shadow and blending it into that brow bone highlight shade. That's why I like to start with the brow bone highlight shade because it makes this color kind of naturally blend itself as it gets closer to the brow. Now, it was really important if you saw, I brought my brush straight across towards the tail of the brow. And this is why it is helpful if you start off with your brows done because you can see kind of where you're aiming for. So I'm bringing that crease shade. And again, this is not gonna be my deepest shade. This is kind of a light to mid-tone shade. So don't start off with anything too dark for this step. And by going straight across, again, I'm giving the illusion that instead of my eye going down, it's going up at the end. I do the same thing on this side. This side, I don't have to go up quite as far, but I am just kind of going a little bit out towards the tail of the brow. And then on the inner corner, I am going down just slightly here, just making sure that I get that color all through the crease and above it. So with this eye, I have to do a little more work in creating a fake crease than I have to do on this eye. I'm gonna go in with this smaller brush. This is the M506 from Morphe, and I'm gonna go in with this shade. This is just slightly more neutral, but it's going to add a little bit of depth here. And I'm going slightly lower than where I started with that crease color 
And again, you can see I'm starting on the outer corner and up towards the tail of my brow. And then on this eye that droops down, I'm starting up and bringing it down kind of as I go towards the inner corner. And I'm not taking this all the way in, but about halfway across. And then I'm going to also start blending this down towards the lash line. Now, I don't do my concealer before I do my eyeshadow because I use the cleanup stage of cleaning up eyeshadow as the final way to make sure I get the lift that I need on this eye. So it also allows me to kind of be a little messy here on the outer corner, knowing that I can clean it up at the end. All right, so you can see I'm going more straight up than out on this eye. I am going slightly beyond, but I'm being careful not to go too far beyond the brow tail here because I'm already extending this eye. So you can see this is where my corner stops right here. And I am already on the outer edge of that but I'm going straight up rather than out with this color. And now I'll just continue to blend a little bit more of this onto the lid. Now on this eye, I'm gonna do a similar thing, but because this one's more hooded, I'm going to actually bring this out just a little bit because I am going to extend the kind of width of this eye or extend it a little bit beyond. But instead of going straight up here, I'm going to go slightly out. And again, using the tail of the brow as my guideline. Going up and then making sure to really blend this into the crease and above. And because this is my hooded, my more hooded eye, I want to relax and make sure I can still see that shadow once my eye is down. If I can't, I got to blend up just a little bit more. And then I like to just blend as I go along. So I'm going to go back to our M504 and no extra product. I'm going to go ahead and add my lid shade next. I'm going to use this shade, which is so pretty. Oh, love this shade. And with hooded eyes, by putting a lighter color on the lid, it does help give the illusion that your lid space is a little bit bigger, but you'll see on this eye, I don't have as much lid space showing as I do on the other eye. So I am going to take this, even though it's a shimmer shade, you can see I'm taking it up a little bit higher here on the inner corner. And it's making the eye appear just slightly more open there than it was before. On this eye, I'm going to also apply, but I'm going to be careful not to go up too far because this one is already quite open, so I don't need that extra help like I do on the other eye. I'm gonna go ahead and spritz this brush. This is an E60 from Sigma. I have a little bit of shadow on each side and I'm just gonna use this to smooth out the texture just a little bit of that shadow and add just further brightness right here on the inner corner. Now, probably one of the most important steps is eyeliner. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm using the IT Cosmetics Superhero No Tug Gel Liner. This is in super black. And I'm going to start on this eye that's more hooded. I just, that's kind of my comfort zone. So what I do is I start halfway, the halfway point, 
and then go a little bit on the other side and I'm really putting this closely into the roots of the lashes. And because my eyes are hooded, if your eyes are fully hooded, you're probably just gonna wanna go below the lashes. But I'm going to now, as I get towards the outer corner, I'm going to create a little bit of a wedge shape, not much on this eye. So this is the eye that's more hooded, but it kind of naturally goes up a little bit. But you'll see I am from that midpoint going kind of straight across. And today I am not going to do much of a wing. Just going to get to the edge of my eye and go up just slightly. And then I'm going to smudge it out with shadow. So there is kind of the outer part. You can see it's pretty thin from here on out and just a little bit of a lift. And then I'll just kind of smush a little bit of shadow. Smush, that's a technical term <laughs> to the roots of the lashes. All right, so hopefully you can see how thin, like I really have hardly any shadow there. It's more in the roots of the lashes. Now I'm gonna take the BK Beauty 204 and go in with the deepest shade in this palette and use this to do the finishing work of this liner, making it look softer and further deepening just the outermost part of the corner here. And again, remember, I don't have a visible, my crease is hidden over here. So I'm trying to make it look like I do have an actual corner here. So that's why I like to add a little bit of depth here. And then, Going to keep that shadow really close to the lashes. Just really smudge out softly that line. Little blend. All right, so I like how this is looking lifted, but now you can really see this one has some issues, so let's fix that. All right, so on this eye, I again start in the middle point and work my way just short strokes out. But you can see, I'm not just going straight, I'm going out and kind of almost up. So if I were to follow my natural line, it would make my eyes look even more downturned. So on this eye, I'm going to have a slightly larger wedge shape here, and you can do winged liner. I have a whole video on that, but not going to do that today. Instead, I'm just filling in that corner with liner. So it looks almost like I have a triangle here. And then I am going to, because this eye is slightly more open, as I bring this liner in, I'm going to, it's going to be a slightly thicker line. I don't want to say a thick line, but it's going to be slightly thicker than what I did over here. And I'm trying to kind of shorten the distance here just a little bit. All right, now let's go in with our shadow. And that 204. And do the same thing we did on the other eye. And then I just like to kind of do a final blend here in the outer corner, making sure we can see those darker corners there above the crease when the eye is open. Now the lower lash line also plays a very important role in evening out our eyes. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm taking the Urban Decay Double Life Pencil and I'm going to kind of place this right below the outer edge of the lashes 
and then I am going to kind of work it into the roots of the lashes. I'll keep it off the waterline today. I'm just going to use this as a base and go about halfway. I'm stopping kind of right about at the center of my lash line, maybe just a little beyond. And then I'll take my Morphe M432 and a little bit of this shade right here. Let's use that to soften and smudge. So I am connecting it with that outer corner, but I'm being careful to connect it and go up, not out this way. Over here, I'm going to actually go down a little bit lower on the outer corner and I will connect it to that upper corner in just a moment with some shadow, but I'm going to take this and then when I get towards the center of my eye, I'm actually going to bring this into the roots of my lashes and up. So not smudging it so far down here. I'm going to kind of level off this eye just a little bit and then go in First, I'm gonna go in with this dark shadow and I'm going to now draw this up. Once you have your lower lash line done, you can see if you brought that upper lash line shadow out far enough. And I didn't quite do that, so I need to even that out just a little bit here. And then I'll take that brush and go in with this lighter shade. And then you can see if you need to go in this one, I feel like I need to do a little bit on the actual waterline here. There we go. So you can see that gives the illusion that the eye kind of goes up. It's filled in a little bit more here. And then we brought that shadow down here. So it's looking a little more even. All right, now it's time to clean up under the eyes. As I mentioned at the very beginning, this is one of the most important steps where you can kind of finish out or correct any issues. So I just use a little bit of almond oil. I transfer it into this beautiful bottle to recycle it. So just using a Q-tip and almond oil. This is also a wonderful moisturizer for your under eyes. And you wanna make sure, you, I mean, I'm not gonna leave that pool of oil there for sure, but just placing that under there. And then I'll take my Q-tip and just go up towards the edge of the brow. And then I can use my finger just to further define that edge. And you, again, you wanna make sure you're not pushing that oil up towards your eye. But then just tap in the excess and this will be a great preparatory step for our concealer as well. Now over here, kind of similar thing, except I'm going a little bit more this direction than up like this. So just going a little bit out. Now I'm starting off with a little bit of color corrector like I always do. I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury color corrector today. This is the shade 2 medium. I've been testing out a few other options here. So I'm just doing that over the areas that I have the darkest spots. You don't have to do that if you don't have super dark under eyes. Now we're gonna go in with concealer, which is also important, believe it or not. And that is because we're going to pay special attention here on the outer corner with how we place our concealer. So however you conceal the inner corner of your eyes, you just go for it. I'm using the Clinique concealer, so this is WN04. Just doing a little bit of that here. And then I'll do a little here as well. But then I'm going to use the shade WN01, I'm kind of between shades. <laughs> this one's a little too light all on its own, but I'm gonna add a little extra there 
a little extra here. And here in the outer corner, I'm going to go up with a stripe. This looks like a lot of product. It's not. It's just a, I just spread it out. So careful, you're not using too much product. All right. So you can see I'm kind of going up, kind of evening out that outer edge. And now we're done. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm using the Real Techniques Instapop brush. My favorite brush for doing concealer is currently dirty. The one from B BK Beauty. So this is another great one, but I don't think they make this anymore. All right, so I'm just tapping in that concealer and then going up towards the temple. Look at that instant eye lift, right? And this eye, you may have noticed, forgot, I wasn't paying attention what I'm doing. I just do this naturally. Okay, so this eye, I'm bringing that concealer higher and a little bit closer to the nose. This eye, I'm keeping that down lower. Again, that has to do with the distance between my brows and the correct the crookedness of my nose. So I'm trying to create more space here so it looks a little more even. So I'm keeping that nice and bright and then I'm just keeping the concealer kind of in a normal spot here. And then again, tapping in this outer edge of the concealer and going up towards the temple. I'll just set it with a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finishing Powder. This is the shade one. I was tempted to use two, but I think two is just a little too dark. And then I'm going to use that powder here in the outer corner. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and powder and add a little contour and some blush, and then I'll come back and we'll apply mascara all right, let's finish off the eyes with a little inner corner highlight. I'm just using what I used on my face. This is the Lorac Starlight Illuminating Highlighter and using a Sigma E30. And I'm just going to kind of do a lighter application with this today. I'm just using this E30 from Sigma to place a little bit here. And again, on this side, I am bringing that highlight shade a little bit closer to my nose and up. And then this side, I'm just keeping it a little bit lower and then bringing it onto my actual lid. And then, because again, this is the one that is a little less lid space, I'm making sure that I bring this side up, blending it up here onto the lid and up just slightly. Now let's curl our lashes. Very important step for this eye that is hooded. I do need a good curl, but I don't feel like I need as much of a curl as I do on this eye. So sometimes, not always, especially if I'm in a hurry, I don't always get a second curl on this one. But as I'm curling, I am kind of turning the lash curler up just slightly. You want to be careful, don't pull your eyelashes out. And then I'm going to go back and again curling and I'm just angling that lash curler up slightly here on the outer corner. Now it's time for mascara. I'm just going to zoom through this because it's pretty standard application but there's one more step after. So using the Origins Underwear for Lashes It Cosmetic Superhero and then on the lower lashes using the Calaray mascara. Now that the mascara is on, the final step that sometimes I do, again, depending on time, but as you're looking up close, you can kind of see the skin of my inner rim of my upper lash line right here. And so if you've applied your liner on the inner rim, you don't have to do this step, but this is what I will do sometimes instead of applying a pencil all along there because I wear contacts, sometimes it just bugs me. So what I do is I'm, I take a liquid liner 
This sounded really scary at first, I know. This is the Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Liquid Liner. And you want, obviously, a waterproof liquid liner. And all I'm going to do is in that section on this eye is I am going to really kind of press this into the roots of the lashes, being careful not to get it too close to the eye, of course. You don't want a super liquidy liner if you're doing this, but you'll see what that's doing is it's evening out again the look of the space between the lashes on this line on this eye just right here so again this is something because of my particular shape that is the one spot that i really need this i usually don't even have to do it at all on this line on this eye but i do it on this eye just to create the illusion that this eye space is a little more the same as this eye. All right, so I fixed my hair and now I'm going to put on the screen the before and after side by side and let's see if you can see a difference. Hopefully you can, all that work that we put in, but I really feel like the final piece to this whole magic is also how I style my hair. Now, most of the time, not 100% of the time, but most of the time, I part my hair over to the side of the eye that is a little more lifted naturally. It's a little more hooded on this side, but it's a little more lifted. So by parting it going that direction, it leaves this little bit of a space here, which I feel like causes an illusion <laughs> as you're looking at my face. It makes this side look a little more lifted and that is the side that needs a little extra lifting. So I hope that the tips and tricks I shared with you today are helpful to you. It is just a matter of playing around with the different techniques and finding what specifically works for you because everybody's eye shape and issues are different but hopefully the things I shared with you today will help you figure out which ones might work best. Thank you as always so much for watching. Be sure you check the description box for a list of all the products and tools I use today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.